Welcome to Murray Ed. My name is Mark Machado. I'm joined by Sri Lanka's number one journalist, Estelle Vazi Devon, and Sri Lanka's number one cricket historian, uh, Nick Brooks. Uh, this is our kind of live reaction uh, minutes after Sri Lanka's um, loss in their first World Cup game in New York against South Africa. Um, I'll be honest, my head is thumping, my ears are blocked as hell. And on top of all that, that Sri Lanka performance has not made me feel good about it. I was pretty optimistic coming into the tournament. But boy, Nick, what are we blame it on? Is it the pitch? Is it uh, would it do his captaincy? Or was South Africa's seamers just too good for us in the day? Uh, I think it's a combination of factors, really, Mark. He was, wasn't it? From a personal perspective, what a horrible afternoon. It was one of those where you come in with so much exciting and then your heart just sinks lower and lower and lower. But I do think there's got to be uh, some serious questioning of the decision-making from start to finish. I don't know really how you turn up at a pitch you've never played on that looks like that, that's been brought in and think, yeah, this is a bat first wicket. And... Then it looked to me just like kind of panic set in during the early stages of the Sri and innings. I think from the first three overs when they hadn't scored many runs and then Bartman comes on and Nisanka's like, I'm going to hit his first ball for six regardless. Uh, so, yeah, I think Sri Lanka needed to be a bit more nimble, think on their feet a bit more, a bit more flexible, realise quite early that this wasn't a 160 wicket. It certainly wasn't a 180 plus wicket and 120, 130 would have been really competitive. Uh, I think we've also got to talk about the selection because for me, I mean, you saw Marco Janssen's first over, the way the ball was moving around, the way it was lifting, and you just thought this is a perfect wicket tailor-made for someone like Dilsha Madashanka. Um, and so to go in on a wicket like that where there's variable bounce with your two frontline seamers as sling bowlers, guys who aren't going to, you know, exploit seam movement really, uh, I think that something went wrong with identifying the pitch and it was just, yeah, a tough watch. Estelle, let's go right back to that that decision about identifying the pitch, about potentially the level that played and about the decision to um, to have a bat first. It was all a bit kind of nasty saying that ashes, wasn't it? It, it like <laughs> who's to blame? Who should we be angry at? Who should be directing our our angry tweets towards? Yeah, I'm I'm going to sound like an idiot, but like when it when it as it happened. I, would, I didn't hate the decision so much because I thought that, I mean, everybody watching understood that it was going to be a slower track, right? Going from the fact that it had never been used before to, you know, India's warm-up game a d- couple of days ago. We knew it was going to be slow. I just felt like it's not a bad idea to have South Africa chase, given their history with pressure situations. First game of the tournament, they're coming in as one of the favorites. You know, they're batting, they like setting totals, right? With all that in mind, and Sri Lanka seemed to prefer batting first as well. So when it happened, uh, I wasn't too disappointed. Uh, but yeah, it in hindsight, yeah, it is. It is quite a silly decision to take a gamble and bat first when you don't know what's going to happen on a track, right? Particularly when uh, you've historically not adjusted well, uh, when things things haven't been going. Like, I mean, it seems like if Sri Lanka go in with a set like a mindset that they're going to attack, then that's the only way they're going to do things. It doesn't seem like they're able to adjust. So in in a, in a situation like that, I feel like, um, I think even batting first, like Nick mentioned, right, a total of 120 would have been, I think would have been enough given the way the Sri Lankans bowled, particularly the fact that, you know, you've got four guys who can really get you wickets, right? Um so I didn't hate the decision when it was taken, but in hindsight, it does look like a bad one. I, I, I can understand the thinking behind it, but the batters just didn't adjust. And that's what we've been saying right right throughout, that we have the bowling attack to be competitive in this tournament, but the batters need to show up. And that, again, didn't happen. Um, I want to talk about the pitch a little bit, Nick, before we get into kind of our side and, and where it went wrong for Sri Lanka, because... On reflection and looking at what, how South Africa went about their business when they went into bat, I'm utterly shocked that that pitch was allowed to be played on for for a World Cup game, right? And maybe I've just been a bitter 
a bit of Shrunker fan at the moment. He's, he's a bit disappointed with the result. But presumably, if you're trying to break cricket in a new market in New York and trying to attract new fans to it, you don't want games that are even, you know, going to be around chases for 120, right? Surely, surely you want kind of pitches that are kind of battable on. And I mean, India a few days ago, they made a lot more runs than we did, but they're, you know, they made about twice as many runs as we did, but they're about twice as good at batting as we are. I mean, are we going to get five games in New York that are going to be really low scoring like this? Because if we are, that that's not a good play, a position for cricket to be in. No, it's not probably the kind of advert for T20 cricket that the ICC were imagining in New York. I think it was a minefield of a pitch. I mean, looking at those first 10 overs, I've never seen the ball beat the bat more times in a T20 match. It looked like a really tricky spell of test cricket, right? And I mean, I think you saw basically in the whole Sri Lankan innings, I think we saw probably less than 10 shots timed really cleanly. So they were struggling with the pace. There was massive variable bounce. We saw a couple in Janssen's first over that just lifted. And even one from Paterana in the second innings, you know, he's not a bowler who traditionally gets a lot of bounce. And there was one which just took off up, took off off the pitch. There were also some that kept really low. Uh, I thought we saw during Maharaj's spell as well that this looked like a pretty good pitch to be bowling finger spin on. Uh, that one that got Sadira just kind of went through. So, uh, yeah, I can't remember seeing a T20 game played out on a pitch that was harder for scoring runs than this. Uh, the combination of variable bounce and masses of seam movement and a sort of slightly slower pace where the ball wasn't coming through, just like everything that you don't want as a batter, this pitch had, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Go to stuff. yeah the other thing I think which made it even worse was the outfield, right? Yeah, if totally. If you have a tough... Uh, you you have a tough pitch to bat on. Your shots, good shots, should have value, and that didn't happen, right? You had a lot of shots that uh, batters were able to find the gaps, but the ball is just stuck in the ground, right? It's not traveling, and I think that made actually the experience experience much worse, because if you if you say okay, personally, I'm I'm a fan of wickets being varied where you have like you have your 200 plus wickets and you also have these you know 120 130 whatever those type of wickets as well right but the outfields need to be good because when it's already horrible to bat on right and the ball is moving like that at least the good shot should have some value and that wasn't the case today and that that i feel is a bad viewing experience for for fans because i mean you could have lots of fans who enjoy you know this tough battle between batting and bowling um and not not the 200 plus complete bashings right but when the ball isn't traveling along the ground on the outfield that's a big problem i feel i i also felt i don't know if you guys noticed this i thought that outfield looked like prime for uh, field just to get injured on as well there's a couple of times mm-hmm. i saw players on both sides look like they're going to they were really jarring into it, which is another reason I thought this is, you know, these are meant to be the best players in the world, right? Why are you going to, well, why are you letting them feel to this? I mean, can you imagine if that Pakistan-India game ends up being, you know, cumulatively less than 200 runs on it, right? Which could happen, right? Shaheen bowl, bowling from about 10 foot in the air, um, <laughs> slamming down of that deck, bouncing straight into those Indian players. It could easily happen, right? Um It'll be it'll be such a disappointment. Anyway, that aside, the thing we the other kind of place we should focus our frustrations on should be why did we lose so many wickets in in clumps like the way we did? Why did our middle order just absolutely collapse today? And why weren't any of them? I, I think really apart from Angelo, and I kind of want to say Dustin Shardaker a little bit, but I, I suppose even at that point you can kind of blame them as well. They should have just stuck about. T- two of them should have just said, "Right, we're just we're not going to do anything fancy. We're just going to stick about till 18th, 19th, uh, you know, seventeenth or eighteenth over before they try anything fancy." What was going on? I mean, I can kind of, you know, the first three wickets you're like fine, but after that, guys, you, you you've seen how everyone else is getting out, and you're not watching what is going on when you when you're padded up, and you're not seeing. What everyone else is seeing, like even me, who's barely been anywhere near a cricket pitch, can can tell you this is not a place where you want to be trying to play your shots. You're just trying to survive. 
is my anger misplaced, you, Nick, or should am I right to be expecting more from our batters? No, I think that there was a serious lack of kind of nimble thinking. And I think a lot of it came down to the fact that they were 24 for one at the end of the power play. And then between that six and 10, at the end of 10 overs, they were 40 for five. And so, I mean, for me, it was that second half of the first 10 overs where they really lost the game. But I think the kind of thinking or the panic was that after that power play, they were behind the eight ball and they had to do whatever they could to kind of catch up. And for me, when Sadira and Hasaranga got out of back-to-back balls uh, was like when it really sort of turned. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you, I just saw Kusal Mendes miss time so many shots trying to clunk the ball as hard as he could into the leg side and it just going nowhere off the bat. And I think at some point there had to be that switch that said, let's just try and work ones and twos here, see what we can do and hang around till the ball gets a bit softer. Because I think we did see from the limited uh, view that we got of the second half of the innings that it did get slightly easier to bat as the ball got a little older. We saw Angelo time a couple of sixes. We saw... Thikshana get one away. So, um, yeah, I think they could have taken it deeper, but losing wickets in bundles like they did in the first 10 overs, it was always going to be really hard. And uh, I think Hasaranga's wicket kind of rankles a bit. And also the two kind of mirror wickets from Kamindu and Charith, both kind of tapping it down deep backward squares throats. Um, just, yeah, they don't look great in hindsight, do they? Estelle, there's this cricket company called Good Areas, and they've done loads of content recently about Sri Lanka and what their prospects are for the World Cup. And there's an Australian guy in there called Jared and a Sri Lanka girl in there called Estelle. And both of them claim that Sri Lanka's big problem is a lack of intent and not being able to kind of <laughs> muscle the ball over the boundary. It's today the kind of chickens coming home to the roost that actually so many, there's so much commentary around the team saying they need to be intent monsters that actually today was the day they shouldn't have been intent monsters and they weren't able to, to, to rewind the clock. Yeah, I mean, yeah, intent is what we've been talking about, right, over the last two to three years and whether Sri Lanka is falling behind on that aspect. But again, it's about adjusting to the situation, right? Like there's no reason, and I think we, we spoke about this off-air as well, there was no reason to believe that this pitch is going to be a good, pitch or a belter of a pitch right from what we I mean this, this is the first international being played in that stadium the only kind of cricket we've seen is from the warm-up between India and Bangladesh and it was slow there you were expecting it to be slow you saw that it was slow and it was the uh, bounce was uneven and it was difficult to get runs and still decided to bat like that 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 was what was frustrating I think you know uh, Hasaranga we know he's an aggressive batter we know he's an aggressive player overall right whether it's as a captain or bowler or batter or whatever right but in that situation the the kind of shot he played i felt was you know it's unnecessary right if there was a it's unforgivable in a way isn't it like because you should have he should have seen that coming right yeah and he, you know of course he's the enforcer he you want him to come out there and score a couple of uh sixers and you know get get some momentum into the innings but it just from what you saw in the game it seemed like it was a silly thing to do as soon as you came out to bat right and the other like big issue i have is why are you playing sadira samara vikrama if vanindu is going to be promoted above him in every game, right? Essentially, you're playing Sadira Samaravikram at number four because one, you can't bat him any lower than that. And two, because he's like the anchor stabilizer type of batter, right? So what's the point of playing him if you're, every game you're going to promote Hasaranga up to number four? I felt like uh, this was the game where you wanted that stabilizer batter to come in at number four and kind of absorb a bit of that pressure and bat long um i mean either way sadira didn't have a good game either right so it's all a bit frustrating the way the batting went i think just looking at how things turned out in the end maybe even 120 would have been a winning total the sad the disappointing thing is that nobody was willing to kind of adjust and play that kind of innings that uh could have taken them there 
it should have been Sidera's day, Nick, right? This is the he's the insurance policy brought in to stop things like this happening, right? Yeah, um, I, I kind of I agree with Estelle. If there was ever a situation when it wasn't right to promote Hasaranga above him in the eighth over or whenever he came in, today was the day. And I think that, you know, it was a yeah, um, it was a day to tick it around a bit, take it into those last six overs and then see what you can score there and try and get up to 120, 130, which I think Sri Lanka could have done had they just approached it differently. That's, I think, the sort of real disappointing thing is it wasn't so much a failure of technique or application. It was just the way they went about things was so profoundly wrong. Uh, but then it's very easy to say in hindsight, and we've all been calling for them to play more shots and play more shots and go after bowlers. Uh, but on a pitch like this, you really do have to adjust. Um, should we take some of the questions and quotes and what people have reacted uh, to the loss on social media? If you don't already follow us on X slash Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, then you, you really should. And you should definitely subscribe to our newsletter um, because if everyone read what was in our newsletter and it had gone through to the team, we definitely would have won today. But that's a by the by. Also, a big shout out to my cousin Dominic, who's normally on the pod, but can't be there, can't be on the show today because he's there with his family. His son, his first ever game of cricket, I think he's only about five or six years old. What a way. Oh, no, he's going to end up supporting South Africa now, isn't he? Yeah, poor Dom's son, man. Oh, right. Bash Kure. Uh, Kusum Mendes was terrible today, put a lot of pressure on other batsmen and dropped a catch. Azam Khan would have been able to take. Also, Sadira adds nothing if one Indu's going to float above him, takes Sadira out and play an extra bowler or bring in Raja Paksha. Um, I kind of think we've all been alluding to that. I also um, not sure why we had to, why Bash felt we had to throw shade at Azam Khan, but I'm here for it if you want to, man. Um, that's fine. In a way, this is very much just um, kind of group therapy for Sri Lanka fans, right? That's, that's kind of what we're here for. Um, why is Shrunk so bad in the first game of international tournaments? Uh, Kith Money has written that in. Um, it is a bit of a theme, isn't it, Estelle? I mean, last time, Rad, we lost to Namibia, again, a team from Southern Africa. Uh, this time, we lost to, to to actual full South Africa, which I suppose is marginally better, right? <laughs> I mean, um, that's that's been kind of a theme for a last for a few years, right? Even in in bilaterals, losing the first game or being terrible. That's why I felt like you know that that even though we everyone felt like it's such an insult for Sri Lanka to play qualifiers, like playing that qualifier round before the World T Twenty in the last couple of tournaments has been actually beneficial because they kind of get kind of have that little bit of leeway to get into the tournament and adjust whereas here and again in the i mean again no offense to like nepal um and the netherlands but to have like your big your toughest opponent in the group first up also not ideal right yeah i also wonder if we're playing too many not playing enough bilaterals against more established teams. Yeah. Uh, but also that's a bit chicken and egg, right? Because they need to want to come and play us, right? Uh, Bear Arm, our, our good friend, he's also from good areas. Uh, <laughs> I said, do you guys think Thiechner should have been tried earlier? Um, Absolutely. 100%. Nick? Yeah. Yeah, I said on the group that, like, given the attack that Sri Lanka had gone with, I wouldn't have minded seeing an over from him in the power play uh, because we've seen that he can swing the new ball. The way that pitch was going, there there was variable bounce. There were you, one that skids through. I mean, de Kock was a left-hander there. I thought that given we didn't have a Madashankar or Chimera in the lineup today, I would have liked to see Theeks bowl any time before... Uh, six runs are needed off 30 balls. Like, it's felt like they forgot he was there. And uh, yeah, I don't understand what was going on with that. It looked, I mean, I think anyone could see that that was a wicket which favoured finger spinners more than wrist spinners. And so I don't really understand, like, even when Wanindu brought himself, Dikshana would have seemed a better option for me at that stage. Yeah. Uh, and, what could she... Oh, God, go to stuff. I was going to say, like, now, people are going to look at this and say, look, Sharnaka and Matthews combined for six overs um, and gave away only like 22 runs, right, for one wicket. 
but the point is bowling two of them with the new ball i think of the power play six overs three overs were bowled by matthews and shanaka right your technically your fifth bowling option um i know the ball was moving and they were at least shanaka was thre- uh, like threatening to get a wicket or two right but it's still not the same as having one of your strike bowlers bowling right i understand not bowling matisha with the new ball because he does seem to struggle when the ball is newer that's fair enough um he also i felt was brought in a bit too late but someone like uh, tikshana who you know he's not your conventional spinner as well right he's a guy who can bowl those i kind of tries to use the swing as well so it was i mean i feel that was kind of defensive captaincy in that what are you waiting for right you're not going to restrict them to 77 you need to take wickets and you need to give like i can understand if he had bowled tikshana or himself early on and it looked easier for the batters to get away and then he stuck to someone like uh, shanaka or matthews right but that didn't happen and by the time sri lanka was always going to lose the game but by the time tikshana was brought into the attack there was actually no point in him coming into that attack right so it like those things are a bit confusing because you have to get your best wicket taking options up front and i know like people are going to say okay angelo matthews has taken this many wickets in the power play in this number of months whatever right but he's still not your best he might not go for runs but he's not your best wicket taking option and again like to come back to nick's point about like not playing chamiro uh, madushanka again both of them are wicket taking options right they are not containing options and if you look at patirana he is like i think 70% a containing option and 30% a wicket taking option if he's not bowling in the depth so like you need those wicket taking bowlers to be bowling up front um three more comments came in uh from johan what can shrunk do to address their batting collapses they have been bowled out for under 120 or collapse in t20i or odis against india i think he's put four times new zealand three times australia and now south africa I mean, that's the kind of like, the million dollar question, right? I th- I think though, actually, if you you know, I spent a lot of time with uh, Jared Kimber during the IPL, and Jared's kind of take on it, which I think kind of is 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 kind of a a slight truism, which is that if you're going out to be intent monsters, and you know, we kind of talked about this earlier on. Then you've kind of got to accept that occasionally this is going to happen. I do think, though, that said for Sri Lanka, it's happening too frequently for it to be an occasional occurrence now, and that kind of when it's you know when it's happened against India recently, it happened twice in the last twelve months against India, right? I, a, it was a lot more dramatic, um, and B. You kind of you just need someone to drop the break, and no one ever seems to realise that they need to drop the break, and I don't understand it. Nick, can you can you help me understand it? Can you get into the psychology of the of the team no, and tell me why no one's understood that they just need to stay there? I can't, but I think psychology is a good word because I think that rather than anything technical, it is like really that when Sri Lanka start to lose wickets, panic seems to set in, and then the confidence goes, and then the whole the wheels just fall off right i think we saw it a bit during the 50 over world cup and i think we kind of saw it again today that it's like oh shit what the hell is going on we just all we can do is try and bang our way out of this and yeah i mean we've said it time and again in the last half hour flexibility kind of being able to read the situation being a bit more nimble i mean today was a day when hasaranga if he's going to send him in self in it, himself in it, that situation needs to take five balls right and needs to at least have a little look before he really tries to go off and it just didn't happen and it yeah it seems that collapses happen too often with this side and they need to bounce back hard against bangladesh on friday night on what we at least expect to be a much better wicket than what they got served up today um The other question that's come in uh, was why did Chimera play? I mean, I think we've covered this a lot. Um, I will be honest, yeah. I thought playing two slingers is much more interesting and is more likely to get us ten wickets than playing Chimera at this point. Um, 
for me, I'd have also picked uh, Manu Shankar over Chimera as well, but um, just because I think he he asked more questions of the batters. Um, but I think That's... the the whole like we, in a way, this is the first time Sri Lanka's really had this issue in a long time where we've had this many world class like and they are world class bowlers to to go who should play, who should not play, like. And I think, and we saw this today, and this is a comment about selection and it's a comment about whether or not we should have batted first and what happened at toss. It's a comment on the way we batted and played today. For me, Shrunk is about 85% loaded. It's like, it's like, it's got all the, the right ingredients and it's got players in place. We just need to, to, we've got the fire in the belly. We need to develop the ice in the head to make the right decisions in the right moments. And that involves team selection because I think maybe in hindsight today, team selection was slightly wrong. And, you know, we talked about why the teacher should have bowl earlier. And it's like every moment, every decision they've made, you can kind of debate. The next question to you guys, though, is up next, it's our, it's our old friends. Um, th- that's the best possible scenario after that kind of game, though, Estelle, isn't it? Because you want a fiery in to get yourselves back into it, right? And to feel alive again. Right. I mean, it it depends, right? There is also a tendency to kind of look down on Bangladesh. So I hope they don't take it lightly and think like Bangladesh just lost to the USA. Um, what are they going to have to offer? Because in these kind of conditions, um, I'm sure, I mean, I hope the conditions will be better than what we saw today. But in these kind of conditions, Bangladesh can also be a dangerous side, right? So they need to... Um, kind of pick themselves up from today. I think the bowling performance would have given them some confidence in that, you know, someone like Quinter de Kock, yeah, he hasn't been in the greatest of form, but he, he also struggled for like 10 overs, right, to get going, despite being in from ball one. So that probably get, would have given them some confidence in that it wasn't actually a good pitch to bat on. Um, hopefully they can put in a good performance because – it looks like that'll be the do-or-die game, right? I mean, the Netherlands and Nepal to come. Uh, if they lose to Bangladesh, they're most probably coming back at the end of the group stage. Nick, if you were uh, in the Shrunk Team Hotel tonight, what are you saying to the boys to get them up for the for that game against them that should not be named? Uh I, my messaging would be just forget about today. It was a total anomaly on a cricket pitch that no one had ever seen that basically is completely different to what you can expect from T20 cricket. Tournament starts Friday uh, in Dallas, which we saw. I mean, there was a high scoring game there between the US and Canada to open the tournament. There were some big scores put up in MLC last year. So Friday night should be totally different against a team that, They've just beaten in a bilateral series. It's a do-or-die game. If you lose that, you're out of the tournament after two games. The worst possible situation. So if that doesn't put a bit of fire up your backside, uh, I don't know what does. And then you've got the whole Nagin Derby to throw another little layer of spice into the pot. I mean, in a way, it's kind of perfect. But yeah, I think don't mull too much on today and go into Friday with that a fresh approach. And I mean, if they think that Tushara and uh, Paterana are the two best seamers in the squad at the moment and the pitch is flat on Friday, then those are the guys who should play. I don't think it should be knee-jerk reaction time, changing things for the sake of uh, we've had a shitter today. Guys, should we leave it there? We'll be back um, at some point in the next few days once we've kind of put our thoughts together. We'll definitely be back to react to whatever happens in the Nargin. Um, we might even do a preview show for you who knows Um, thank you for listening if you haven't done so already you got this far and you haven't subscribed then what you're doing hit the subscribe button Uh, sign up for our newsletter we've been the Merrily End thanks a lot bye